Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And it's our all English unit for the month of June. And today we're going to be talking about food, but more specifically, we're going to be talking about the taste of food.、Uh, that's one reason why we like to eat because we can experience that wonderful taste. And、uh, we're talking about kind of the development of taste over a person's lifetime. Right. You know, I was just thinking, if we didn't taste food, it just wouldn't be the same. I don't eat because I'm hungry. A lot of times, I just want something tasty.、Mm. Um, in fact, I'll have just finished eating, and I'm fine. And I just want something else to munch on. It's a taste thing. It's not. Because I feel hungry, so we're going to talk about how taste was developed. It's very interesting to find out how young we start developing preferences for different kinds of flavors,、um, and we're going to talk specifically about a flavor here that's、uh, popular in Asia, but now America and other、uh, North American countries have. Have adopted it, and that's umami. So、mm-hmm. let's get started. We're going to read through. Remember, it's our all English, so no Chinese teacher, and we'll try try to speak a little bit more clearly and slowly. As children, we adore the flavors of some foods and despise those of others. However, these likes and dislikes change when we become adults. How are our flavor preferences formed, and why do they change as we age? First, it's important to comprehend how we perceive flavors. As food is broken down in our mouths, taste buds on our tongues and in our mouths sense flavor compounds. The basic flavors are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. However, there are numerous subtle variations on these flavors. For example, there are numerous different compounds that cause us to sense bitter flavors. Our taste bud receptors sense different compounds. And pass the information to our brains. At the same time, flavor compounds from food enter the air and are sensed by further receptors in our noses. Our brains turn all this information into a simple idea of what the food's flavor is. Our flavor preferences begin to form before we're born. We're exposed to the foods our mothers eat, and this tells us that they're both safe and nutritious. Studies have shown that children whose mothers ate certain foods while pregnant. Show a liking for these foods when they try them. The process continues in breastfed infants. What's more, it's likely we have certain preferences in our genetic code. Kids prefer sweet and salty foods to bitter ones. This is because the former are rich in calories and the minerals their brains need, respectively. On the other hand, bitter taste could indicate the food is rotten or dangerous. In prehistoric times, this flavor bias was important for survival. Finally, we come to associate some foods with happy or unhappy memories, and this affects our preferences. However, our preferences are formed; they leave a lasting impression, though they're still subject to change. We learn to appreciate different flavors and textures as we grow up. In addition, our taste buds become less sensitive as we get older. This is one explanation for why adults are able to enjoy foods they rejected as children. Equally. We sometimes crave stronger flavors to stimulate our weaker taste buds. Fortunately, we'll never run out of new dishes to try. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the title. It's all a question of taste. Taste here. We're talking about specifically the sense of taste that we have in our bodies, the ability to、um, understand what kind of flavors we're tasting on our tongue. Our tongue, of course, has all those、uh, taste buds. Those little taste buds are receptors that signal to our brain what kind of flavor it is. So they're very smart and they can figure it out. Now, at the beginning of this, it says, "As children, we adore the flavors of some foods and despise those of others." If you adore something. You love it.、Um, I think it's a matter of intensity.、Uh, if you love something, it's、uh, pretty strong. If you adore something, I think it's even stronger. And as we see here, as children, 
we adore the flavors of some foods, and then you can see kids really reject or hate or hear despise. That's a very strong, intense word. You despise something. You hate it so much, and a lot of kids despise、uh, certain foods, particularly vegetables. Let's be honest; they hate broccoli or say Brussels sprouts,、um, cauliflower. What are some other ones?、Uh, I hated, spinach. I hated beets. Beets.、Ugh. I hated beets. beets.、Yeah. I was okay with beets.、Uh, I didn't、you. like.、Uh, I didn't like、uh, squash. I thought that was a,、oh. a weird vegetable to eat. <laughs> although I really like it now, but back it. then I didn't. And that will kind of go along with what we're talking about today: the、yeah. idea that、uh, tastes change as we get older. So yes, as children, when we're children, we just love the flavors of some foods, like ice cream and candy, maybe pizza. But we hate and despise the flavors <laughs> of other kinds of foods.、Yeah. However, these likes and Dislikes change when we become adults.、Now、that is true. As we get older, we begin to like different kinds of food, and maybe we like the food、uh, less so that we liked as children. Maybe we don't like to eat candy so much when we get older. And、uh, we got a question here: How are our flavor preferences formed, and why do they change as we age? Now, your preference is what you prefer; it's what you'd rather have. And、uh, this, of course, is common when you're setting up your web page or setting up an app on your phone. You've got those preferences,、mm -hmm. like、uh, do you want the screen to be white, or do you, do you want it to be black? What font do you want? How bright do you want it?、Uh, do you want certain messages to come in? What kinds of sound? Sounds he wants.、Uh, those are preferences. I could say my preference is to walk fast rather than to jog outside. I just enjoy walking a lot more than jogging. I hate jogging. So we have lots of different preferences. Some people have a preference for one color or over another, or for living in one country over another. You can have lots of different kinds of preferences.、Uh, they're formed as we grow up. Sometimes a preference is formed as we get to know a certain.、Um, Area that we're studying. Maybe you didn't、uh, know much about art, and once you did learn, you had a preference for one particular type of art rather than another. So, how are our flavor preferences formed, and why do they change as we age? Unfortunately, Tom, I still like candy. I wish I didn't, but、um, I don't eat the kind of candy I used to when I was a kid. So that's good. But moving on to the next paragraph, what does it say?、It's Says first,、uh, when we're trying to answer this question, how are our flavor preferences formed,、mm -hmm. and why do they change? Well, first, it's important to comprehend how we perceive flavors. So, in order to answer that question, we need to understand. Our method of perceiving flavors. Okay, how does this process work? How do we put our tongue against some food, taste it, and then decide with our brains whether we like it or whether we hate it? Yeah. So yeah, we need to understand how we perceive or how we understand flavors. And as food is broken down in our mouths, taste buds on our tongues and in our mouths sense flavor compounds. So we're breaking down food. We're just changing it into a simpler form. We're basically chewing it. That's what the sentence is trying to say. As food is chewed in our mouths, as we chew it, as our tongue kind of moves it around, and as we make it more easy to swallow, well, then these flavors come out. And then we've got these taste buds on our tongues. I guess we've also got them in. Other parts of our mouths, and these taste buds sense flavor compounds. Now, a compound is just a chemical made up of different elements,、uh, kind of bonded together into one form. And we got different kinds of these chemicals in the food, and of course, the way that they are sensed is with our taste buds. A bud is like a small little round thing, like in the spring before the leaves come out. You've got the buds on the trees.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just、um, feel along the the top of your tongue, you can kind of feel some little, the little uh, uh, not smooth places. So I've always thought they were kind of like little bumps on our tongues.、Mm. Uh, those are some of your taste buds. 
So they're on our tongues and in our mouths, and as Tom said,、uh, they can sense flavor compounds when you put. Two or more different things together, they can actually separate them out and、uh, decipher or figure out what's going on with this particular flavor. Now, the basic flavors are the ones that are very well known in Asia. I think they're even more well known in Asian cooking than they are in American cooking. Because you guys try to combine these particular flavors for the best tasting foods, and those flavors are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. And、uh, it says here, however, there are numerous subtle variations on these flavors. I was telling Tom, umami was kind of a new thing for those of us、um, English speakers, English speakers in the North American world. I was like, "What is umami?" They were talking about it on my cooking shows, and so I had to look it up. It's kind of like、um, I looked it up in the dictionary. It was really strange how it's actually made. But if you want to break it down, it's kind of it's glutamates, and、um, it gives you. There's kind of this、um, concentrated form of that flavor in MSG. Uh, which I think a lot of Chinese cooking was criticized for at one point. Some people were blaming it for causing them to not feel well.、Uh, that's one study. It hasn't been generally proven to be true. But for me, umami is that taste of kind of yummy.、Mm. Just makes everything taste more yummy, and it's a flavor that's very popular here in Asia. Yeah, I think the kanji for umami is jue in Chinese, but I don't know if you guys say it that same way. It means deliciousness in Japanese. I, I read.、Uh, exactly, that's what jue means, or umami.、Mm. And、uh, of course,、uh, we've got these subtle variations on these flavors because because we have different proportions of those flavors. We've got a certain amount of salt, a certain amount of、uh, sugar in there, and we mix them around with umami and bitter flavors and sour and sweet flavors, etc. So we get these. Subtle variations. If something's subtle, it's、uh, not difficult to detect. Okay, if you're trying to taste something, like if you're trying to taste wine, for example, yeah, you can taste the grapes and maybe some of the wood flavor in the wine, but then you get these smaller, less obvious. Taste like maybe there's a little bit of flavor of、uh, of licorice in there or something, or maybe some、uh, salt or something.、Uh, those are subtle variations, and a variation is just a small change in something. So yes, you get the big flavors, and then you get all these smaller, subtler, subtler flavors. Yeah, so you've got a lot of different、uh, flavors coming at you at once sometimes in some of these dishes you eat. For example, it says there are numerous different compounds that cause us to sense bitter flavors. Now, our taste bud receptors, a receptor is something that receives some information and then it signals to your brain、uh, whatever it wants to、uh, communicate. So our taste buds actually signal to our brain what flavor we can. And taste. So this、uh, the taste bud receptors sense or feel or perceive different compounds and pass the information to our brains. So、uh, maybe you've experienced where you've lost the the sense of taste.、Mm. Your food tastes very blah. It's because those taste bud receptors aren't being able to communicate to your brain what you're eating. And food becomes very boring at that point. It's kind of tough. We're going to continue talking about this, guys. But Tom, why don't we go ahead and take our break here, and then we'll be back to continue talking about、uh, taste. Okay, let's continue with our lesson. It's all a question of taste. You could also say it's all a matter of taste.、Uh, this reminds me of a concept that we have in English and in other languages. We just don't really understand why some people like something in terms of food, or their choice in girlfriend or boyfriend,、uh, or their taste in clothes or music or whatever. So we have a phrase: "Well, there's no accounting for taste." If you just don't understand, well, how can that person like that kind of music? Well. 
There's no accounting for taste. We just don't know why people like certain things.、Uh, it's something we just have to accept. And I guess this is kind of true with food. How could you eat chou dofu? To me, that just smells so yeah. awful. Yeah.、Uh, I've never gotten used to chou dofu myself. But in any case,、uh, we were talking about the different kinds of flavors that our tongue、uh, can perceive with the taste buds, and that's how we.、Um, Uh, comprehend how to perceive flavors, and、uh, we've got numerous different compounds that cause us to sense bitter flavors, as we said, and our taste bud receptors sense different compounds and pass the information to our brains. At the same time, flavor compounds from food enter the air and are sensed by further receptors in our noses. Wow! So、yeah. we're not only tasting food with our tongues,、mm-hmm. but we're also smelling it with our noses. We sure are. I have a poor sister who has a lot of sinus problems, and she typically can't smell anything. Her、oh, nose、no. is a mess, and so she misses out on so much of the wonderful flavors of our food, and feels bad about that. But you got to deal with your problems, I guess. So our brains turn all this information into a simple idea of what the food's flavor is.、Uh, going back to taste, I just wanted to mention briefly. We'll often see someone has good taste. Mm. If you hear that, they're usually commenting on someone's、um, idea of what is beautiful. Maybe they have good fashion taste. Maybe the the way they decorate their home is very tasteful,、uh, very beautiful. So we all have different styles, right? But if someone has good taste and you comment on that, it's probably because the two of you have the same sort of taste、mm. in whatever you're looking at. It could be music, fashion.、Uh, Design.、Uh, there are lots of different kinds of tastes out there. It's a good thing, you know. We、mm-hmm. don't all want to be the same. But if someone says you have good taste, they're complimenting you, and it has nothing to do with food. And of course, the opposite of is having poor taste.、Uh, for example, a lot of people think Americans have poor taste in clothing. They wear T-shirts and baseball caps and shorts and sandals when they travel to Europe. Yeah, they have poor taste in clothing or bad taste or、yeah. bad taste. You could say that as well. But again, we've got these flavor compounds on our tongues and in our noses. Our brains turn all this information into a simple idea of what the food's flavor is.、Mm-hmm. So that's how we sense the flavor of the food, and then. We decide whether we like it or not. Now, moving on to the next paragraph, it says, "Our flavor preferences begin to form before we're born. When we're in the womb, we're exposed to the foods our mothers eat, and this tells us that they're both safe and nutritious." I'm not sure if this is telling us that. As you're a fetus in the womb, that you can actually tell what your mother is eating, but there probably is some kind of connection there. If your mother likes to eat oranges, for example, well, after you're born, you might crave oranges. I think it's so interesting that that little baby、um, is is feeling like they can trust that mom to keep them safe and nutritious, give them good stuff to eat. And most mothers really do try very hard to eat、uh, very healthy food when they're pregnant. Studies have shown that children whose mothers ate certain foods while pregnant show a liking for these foods when they try them. So once they're born and maybe they're old enough to start. Eating, you know, like really soft foods, like baby food. We call it baby food.、Mm. Um, it's always fun to see what they they'll like.、Um, we'll take a little spoon and feed them maybe some peaches、um, or maybe some squash, and their faces will show you immediately if they like it. They get that you know that ugh, what are you giving me look on their face if they don't, or if they keep wanting it, they get happy. So the process、um, of them continuing to、uh, build their own preference for foods continues as they're breastfed. Infants, so that food the mom is eating actually goes into the milk the baby eats as well. What's more, it's likely we have certain preferences in our genetic code. I believe that too. Yeah, in our genes, of course, we just are predisposed to like certain flavors.、Yeah. Uh, kids prefer sweet and salty foods to bitter ones.、Uh, it is true, lots of kids like to have sweet food, and they like salty food, like pizza and hamburgers and things like that.、Mm-hmm. But of course, there are exceptions. There are some kids out there. Who, oh, I don't like to eat birthday cake. I don't like sweet food. But、uh, that is the exception and not the rule. They are very unusual. Yeah,、yes. it's very unusual for kids <laughs> not to like sweet or salty. 
things.、Mm-hmm. Uh, they prefer those kinds of foods to bitter ones. They don't like bitter foods so much, and this is because the former、uh, sweet and salty foods are rich in calories and the minerals their brains need, respectively.、Mm. Okay, so yes, indeed, we're talking about sweet and salty foods. And so, first of all, we've got this word respectively, which means we've mentioned two items, and this is referring back to those two things: sweet and salty foods. So the sweet food. The sweet foods are rich in calories, and the salty foods have the minerals our brains need. Ooh, interesting. So yeah, you're not going to get good minerals from sweet food, but you will get calories. And we don't want to die, so our bodies are always looking for calories. Even if they're empty calories, as we call、uh, sweet foods. Now, the minerals our brains need—that's really important. So, on the other hand, bitter tastes could indicate the food is rotten or dangerous. So, if something's rotten, especially food, it's spoiled. It's past the point where you should be eating it. It usually smells funny or starts growing mold or bacteria on it, like blue or green stuff. It's gross.、Mm. So, in prehistoric times or before history was written down, this flavor bias or prejudice was important for survival. Yeah, you need calories; it'll keep you alive. So, those are the sorts of things that have come down through time. So, finally, we come to associate or connect some foods with happy or unhappy memories, and this affects our preferences. Uh, exactly right. So of course、uh, we'll probably associate happy times with a birthday cake, a chocolate cake with frosting on it.、Uh, that will give us a nice association.、Mm-hmm. So we've got the verb to associate, which means to find the similarities between two or more things.、Uh, you might associate good times with、uh, college. You know, every time I think of college or university, yeah, I had some great times、uh, during that time. So a lot of people associate university with fun.、Uh, some people may associate. High school with the depression and loneliness. Maybe they didn't enjoy high school so much, so they don't like to think about it so much. But yes, indeed, we do associate some foods with happy memories and some other foods with unhappy memories. Like、uh, when my pet cat died, I just eaten some spinach. So ever since then,、Aww. I I don't like spinach. That's just an example. It's not true. Oh, good, good. I once drank from a cup. My mom had a laundry. Uh, softener in it,、Uh-oh. and I had made myself some punch or just a little sweet treat, a little drink, and I didn't know that there was some laundry softener in the bottom of the the glass. Uh oh. And so to this day, I can't stand that particular brand. It was called Hawaii. It was a Hawaiian Punch,、okay. which was really good, colorful, fruity punch. I can't stand it because every time I even look at it, I can. Feel myself like vomiting, throwing up. It was awful. So yeah, those are very strong memories in our brains. For some reason, remember what we like and what we don't, and what it's associated with. It says this isn't one explanation or reason why adults are able to enjoy foods they rejected as children. So yeah, as you get older, your taste buds become less sensitive.、Uh, maybe you don't need as much salt. Or maybe you need more salt because you can't taste anything.、Mm. That's hard because we're supposed to、uh, reduce salt as you get older. Now, an explanation is just a good、uh, reason why something is true. Often, children will ask their parents, "Why? Why? Why?" And parents get tired of explaining things. But it's a statement that makes something clear to somebody. Right, and of course that comes from the verb to explain.、Mm-hmm. So that's one explanation for why adults are able to enjoy foods they rejected as children. So we did mention some examples, and of course nowadays it's very difficult to get children. Uh, at least in the United States, to enjoy foods that are good for them.、Mm. Uh, if you look at the average school lunch for schools in the United States, it's just really awful. It's lacking nutrition. It's got a lot of、uh, salt and、uh, high fructose corn it's syrup. It's worse in the UK.、Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> that's、uh, that's encouraging. I guess that America's not the worst one.、Yeah. But in any case, yes, indeed.、Uh, as we get older, we tend to change our preferences for food. Yeah. And、uh, so that's one explanation why adults. Are able to enjoy foods they rejected as children, and again, I men- mentioned some examples. Like for me, it was squash, and maybe some other things.、Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I can mention、uh, alcoholic beverages here, but of course, kids or young kids. 
hate the taste of beer if they try it. I don't think they're supposed to try it. I don't know if that's legal or not, but basically they say it's an acquired taste, and we could say that for a lot of different kinds of food, like chow tofu. Ugh, I hate that stuff.、Yeah. Well, it's an acquired taste. You have to try it several times before you actually can appreciate the flavor of it. So equally, it says we sometimes crave or really want. That's what crave means. Stronger flavors to stimulate our weaker taste buds. That's why older folks get in trouble with adding too much salt to their dishes. To stimulate something here just means to encourage some sort of activity or interest、uh, to increase it. So you want to stimulate interest. In reading with the kids as they're younger, so they'll grow to love reading. So here,、uh, we need to stay away from those.、Uh I guess、uh, those dishes that have too much salt as we get older, too much sugar. Fortunately, and here's the good news: we'll never run out of new dishes to try. So you can always、uh, test your taste buds on all sorts of new dishes as they come along. That is very true, especially nowadays that we've become a global village, and we can try different kinds of foods at different kinds of restaurants. I've been in Taiwan for about thirty years or so. So、yeah. when I first came here, of course, there weren't many choices in terms of food besides local food, which is great. Of course, I like the、sure. local food, Taiwanese and、uh, Sichuan Thai and things like that were readily available. But you could not get, say, Arabic food, Middle Eastern food, or Mexican food, or Or Russian food, for that matter, it was very difficult. But、uh, nowadays,、uh, that stuff is、uh, readily available. Yeah, when I first got here,、um, and this was a long time ago, people will know when I tell them.、Uh, there was one McDonald's in all of Taiwan,、Ooh. and it was,、uh, you know, pretty popular among the foreigners that were here. There weren't a lot of foreigners either, but.、Uh, Yeah, it's changed a lot, and I love that we can、uh, taste dishes from other cuisines. I am especially liking、uh, cuisines from、um, like India. I love、mm. their food, and I've been trying lately some new Thai dishes. I like spicy food, but sometimes their dishes can be quite spicy. So yeah, our taste buds will continue to evolve or change over time. I think, but. To this day, I've never been a big fan of bitter food. I don't know if that'll ever change for me. Uh, yeah, bitter melon is quite common here. A lot of people like to eat that, but I've uh, been. Uh, it's been very difficult for me to develop a taste for bitter melon, even though my wife tells me it's quite nutritious and it's good for you. It's good for certain、uh, things in your body,、mm -hmm. and there's also okra. Oh, I like okra. But、uh, I've uh, never <laughs> been able to really like okra because of that slimy texture on the outside of it. Even though they say the slimy stuff is actually the stuff that's good for you. No. I grew up with a dad who、uh, is a Texan, and they cooked okra completely different than they do here or in other countries. Actually, they would cut it into little slices. They would coat it in butter and flour and fry it,、mm. and that is completely different. In my family, we grew okra in the backyard, and we would fight over who got、Ooh. most of the okra. So I grew up with it. I'm glad I can buy it in the stores here, but I prepare it in a different way. But I. I do like the slimy stuff too. I just—it's because it reminds me of my home and growing up, and my dad and mom. So, yeah, those memories are a big,、um, a, a big deal in terms of whether we like something or don't like something. Exactly, and of course, the topic for today's article is all about the evolution of our tastes through our lives, how they change. But of course, you can all use this as an excuse to talk about food, which everybody seems to do. We okay, love that, it. Love it indeed. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today, and that's all the time we have for today. Our Chinese teacher is off today, not going to、uh, say anything, so we're going to go straight to our goodbye, and we look forward to seeing you next time from all of us here at English Digest. My name is Tom. I'm Stephanie.、Goodbye. See ya.